Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Leo for July 2016. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Check out what's new on my blog. If you'd like to study astrology with me, check out my astrology apprenticeship program that will be enrolling in July. And if you want to bust out of being a slave to a geographical location for your income, check out my Creating Successful Online Business course, also enrolling in July. So what's going on in July? We've got a mega month or for action. This is a month that many people have been waiting for where Mars is finally direct. We don't have to deal with any Mercury retrograde shadow or transit. Jupiter's direct and there are lots of trines that support movement forward finally. So I'm going to go into more details about why I think this is a great time for action and why you really need to capitalize on this time. But first I want to talk about things specific for Leo. So the first thing on my mind for Leo is that for many of you, or for some of you at least, is going to be your birthday. Our early Leo placements are going to have their birthdays, and for you, um, this is a very big time. There are certain astrological power periods where the universe is more receptive to your desires, and the birthday time is one of those. The sun in the sky represents the things that you want, and the sun in your chart represents the things that you want. It's the same meaning. So when they combine as they do on your birthday every year, it's like a portal for your desires that's opened up and the universe is more receptive. So definitely check out my video called Making Wishes Come True. You can search for it, Annie Botticelli, or go to my channel and put in Making Wishes Come True. And I go into lots of detail about how to capitalize on your birthday wishes, other power periods, and how to uh, work your wishes in a way that make them much more powerful. So happy birthday for you. Um, so what happens before birthday time is the sun definitely, and often, and in this case, other personal planets tend to cluster in the 12th house. So once all those planets get into the first house, it's like the birth, the rebirth, the newness, the busting into everything new. But the time before that happens, which is like the five to four to five weeks before your birthday, you have this congregation of energy and specifically the sun highlighting your 12th house. And the 12th house is very different than the first house where everything just springs forward. The 12th house is your deep unconscious mind and the light in your deep unconscious mind brightens up things that either you've intentionally been avoiding, avoiding or that you didn't know were there. So many people can feel very anxious before their birthdays. I know that I would go through this cycle and I would notice that at some point in the fall, I would have this weird period and I did not understand it. And then one day spirit gave me this information. That's because the sun was bringing up all of these things before your birthday. I thought of it as, oh, I'm getting a year older and what have I done and blah, 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 the things that people do. And maybe there's some truth to that too. But many of the normal things we go through in life are actually astrologically based. And this is one of those things. When there's a spotlight in your unconscious, it makes you uncomfortable because you're not trying to look at those things. These are placements of deep fear. These are placements of, of deep dysfunction. There are wonderful things there as well, but there are a lot of challenges. It's like stuff that, stuff that gets swept under the rug. So during the time before your birthday, and it's so beautifully lined up, I just love, love, love how the universe works, that of course, before the time you have an astrological power period where you can make wishes and have access to have a greater chance to have them come true, then the universe reminds you of what you don't want. The universe reminds you of what is in the way and standing in between what you have and what you want or how energy is manifesting through you and how you want it to manifest through you. So it's this beautiful time that you can use very, very productively. So it's a great time for inner work. It's a great time for reflection. And that's what the 12th house is. It's like a quiet sabbatical retreat, reflection, internal meditative type of an energy. So it's a really nice way to line up with the natural planetary energies by just kind of setting yourself into this internal conscious, intentional internal reflection, digging deep in the time before your birthday, asking the big questions. What do I really want? Where can I do better? Where am I blaming people or the world for things that I can be accountable for? You know, what am I afraid of? And I call the energy of this month and this period of time for Leo's 
And anytime I see a cluster of energy in the 12th house, the, like the wizard within, this is straight up Harry Potter stuff, you know, you access the power of your unconscious mind by consciously using it. And your unconscious mind is your wizard within. So that's what's going on for the early and some middle degree placements. So, and this is coming soon for the rest of you. The early degree placements are the beginning of the sign, like the 22nd, 23rd through around August 2nd. So like 22nd or 23rd of July through August 2nd, or for your rising sign, zero through nine degrees. The middle degree placements are like around August 3rd through August 12th, or 10 through 19 degrees. And the late degree placements are August 13th through the rest of the sign, or 20 to 29 degrees if you're watching for your rising sign. So the early and middle degree placements, you're going to have, have this happen sooner. For the rest of you, you first in July will have this congregation of energy, the sun, Venus, Mercury, the new moon, in your 11th house. And the 11th house is like this very busy, busy type of energy. It's like the busyness before the quiet internal space, before the rebirth, you know, this is the cycle. So the 11th house has to do with the group and your place within the group. Friendships, acquaintances, social networking, gathering, anything internet based, anything involving the collective or the community or humanitarian efforts. It's very much a busy external interactive type of energy. So you still have some of that before this 12th house stuff starts to get highlighted if you're a later degree placement. And you can, if you're paying attention, you'll feel the energy change, you know. It goes from out there to very much in here. So that's the shorter term picture. The longer term transit that I'd love to talk about is involving Jupiter. I love Jupiter because Jupiter is my ruling planet. I'm a Sag and Jupiter also brings luck and benevolence and growth and opportunities. And Jupiter has recently gone direct in May. So now once we're in July, it even has more support for what it is doing because Mars is direct and Mercury is direct. So for the early degree placements and for some, actually for the early and middle degree placements, Jupiter has been telling a story in your second house. And this is really exciting because a very high amount of people, a large percentage of people will actually have their income double, triple or more. Um, and I've seen this happen for me personally when I had Jupiter moving through. I've seen this happen for many, many, many clients that your capacity to earn income expands when Jupiter the Great Expander moves through your house of earned income. Sometimes it's not quite showing up when the transit is happening. Sometimes you're laying a foundation like um, you could be going to school or taking up a trade or investing in something that you know is going to bring you more money in the future and then that sets the new 12 year cycle. So if you're not seeing this yet, first of all, you could be a late degree placement and it's just not there yet. Or second of all, the seeds could be getting planted for the future income to come. So it's very exciting when Jupiter moves to the second house. It really helps you put things into perspective, see what your priority is and involving things that are valuable to you. What is valuable to you? Um, and it's not just material things, you know. For people who are inclined to focus on the environment, this is also one of the houses of the environment, focusing on living sustainably, focusing on leaving a light imprint, focusing on living simply. It's interesting that one end of this spectrum could be lavishness, like lots of money and opulence and expensive things. And one end of the dynamic can be foregoing those things to live simply and what value that has for certain people. And I have no judgment on it either way. We're here to play in this experience and we're supposed to experience different things at different times and it gives us good perspective, but that's the story of the second house. The later degree placements who don't have this happening just yet, you're going to see it soon. And for right now, you're still expanding your view of yourself, your self-esteem, your physical body. It's like you're laying a foundation to make more money or to improve your relationship with things and with the earth, if you're inclined to that, by, by Jupiter expanding your first house, which is your self-esteem, how you see yourself, you know, getting things with your physical body in order to move to the next level of interacting with things, with the material realms. Okay, so those are the things that are specific for your sign. And now I wanna talk about the transits that are general transits that will affect you just as much, but everyone will also be feeling those. So 
I call this month sugar and spice because the way that the energies of Cancer, which are like smooth and sweet, come together with the energies of Leo, which are spicy, it reminds me of a recipe, a favorite recipe that I put together myself called Sexy Peach Pie. I haven't talked about my Sexy Peach Pie in a while. I think it's been years since I've mentioned this. But the month just feels like that to me because there's honey and the peaches in the pie and that's like the sweet, sultry, cancer energy. And then I put cayenne pepper in it, enough to notice. And that is the Leo, the spice, you know? And so this, this is the overriding energy of the month. One of the most important things to know about this month for everyone is that this is a time to act. Unless, of course, your intuition says something otherwise, because you always have to have your intuition supersede what general energies might be. But this is the first month since March that we don't have influence from Mercury retrograde, Mercury's retrograde phase long past, and we don't have that to look at until August 10th when the shadow period starts again and Mars has gone direct as of June 29th. So we are still in the shadow period of Mars retrograde, which means that Mars, which rules your oomph, your zest, your get up and go, how you use your energy, Mars is still a little sleepy, but it's direct nonetheless. So if you have been waiting since March to launch a bunch of things like I have, July is a wonderful time to do that. It's not as clear in some ways as the last three weeks of October, the whole month of November, and just the beginning several days of December, because that next window of time for action is when we don't have any personal planet retrograde influence or in shadow period. And that period of time, October, November, December, like once we're about a week into October, the rest of October, November, and the beginning of December, is the first time in the entire year of 2016 that we don't have influence from a personal planet being retrograde. Personal planets are the ones that are closest to us. So specifically, we talk about Mars and Venus and Mercury because those are the ones that go retrograde. So you have a window of time here to act. And I have three reasons why I feel like this is a time to act unless you're intuitively led to do your launches in the fall, in which case that would be fine too. The first is because we're not having to deal with Mercury retrograde. The second is because Mars is sleepy, but Mars is direct. The third is because there are amazing aspects this month. There are just so many glorious aspects. Many of them are trines. Trines are 120 degree angles, which are considered to be the most favorable in astrology as far as smoothness and easiness and flow. So we've got trines between personal planets, which last like a couple of days. And then we have trines between a personal planet and some outer planets. And those last, you know, more than that, like maybe a week or so. And then we still have a carryover from the big dog trine from last month, uh, the last week in June, where Jupiter and Pluto had their final convergence. They've been dancing in and out of this configuration since fall of 2015. So you still have Jupiter and Pluto, these outer planets. When the outer planets move into any kind of convergence, their effects, the effects of that connection last for a longer period of time because these planets take longer to move. So they're kind of just like locked in a configuration. And even though the most powerful time of the energy has passed, it's just recently passed and you're still very much feeling it. So trines on all levels, um, there's a couple of dicey spots this month, one on July 11th and one on July 16th. Both have, could possibly be jarring aspects with Uranus, so you kind of expect the unexpected around those times, jolting news, jolting information that comes in. But the predominating energy of the month is really smooth, time for action, time to move forward. Another day to pay attention to or the days around this day are is July 19th when we have the full moon at 27 degrees of Capricorn. Full moons bring fullness, completion, fruition. Sometimes something comes in that you've been hoping for or something wonderful happens so that you're emotional in a happy way. But sometimes the emotions are stressful or stress or drama. So the energy is focused around Capricorn and Capricorn rules father figures, authority figures, your work, your career, your life purpose. So 
there's possibility that a lot of smiles and recognition could come in from this fullness, but there's also the possibility of attention being brought to a work issue or you know something that's been pending that's been stressful. If you have anything with a father figure, with an authority figure, with someone at work, especially an authority figure situation at work, my recommendation is to work out the charge around that situation as much as possible before the full moon. Sometimes full moons bring things that we could not have anticipated and it's just kind of like, what, where did that come from? But sometimes it's like the coming to a head of something that's been pending. So if you know that every time you see a certain person at work, there's like a bad energy between you or that you get irritated or stressed when you see them, you can do energy before the full moon to work it out within yourself. And one of the best tools that I have found to do this, and it works powerfully, I've done this at workshops where people who don't know anything about the book I'm going to recommend did this exercise and they had amazing effects. It's from a book called The Marriage of Spirit by Leslie Temple Thurston with Brad Laughlin. And these are wonderful people. And this book is amazing, amazing spiritual tool. The exercises in section two give you this way to work out a problem that's on your mind where it's like a mental exercise, but then it's also a spiritual exercise. And you'd be surprised at what you can clear on your own without even interacting with someone. So the more you can do that before these points of fullness, you know, the um, easier possibly they could be. So at the end of the month, we've got a series of nice aspects with the planet Uranus bringing creativity and genius and um, surprises that will likely be positive. The ones on the 11th and the 16th are those kind of unwelcome surprises usually. But when uh, that planet is in a positive aspect, usually it's like something comes from the blue that's pretty cool. So something that is going on that is pending for us to be discussing again that I'm just going to bring up now, even though it doesn't actually go direct until August, is Saturn in Sagittarius. Saturn moved into Sagittarius and started, and this was last year, or actually at the end of 2014, it's been ongoing and then it moved forward and then it moved backwards back into Scorpio and so it's been going on. But since March, Saturn has been retrograde. And when it's in retrograde, it's more working on things in the backdrop. Um, but then once it moves forward, which will happen in August, it's time to start bringing those things back into the forefront. So here are the two things I recommend involving Saturn and Sagittarius. The first is to understand that Saturn and Sag wants to help you bring about your big dreams into reality. Saturn is the taskmaster. Sag is the big thinker. They're not in a, an easy aspect with each other generally or in a resonance with each other but they can be very helpful to each other because they provide this important counterbalance. So whatever big dreams, big goals, destiny, you know, um, something that just seems maybe even unreachable. Like if you, someone asked you, what is it that you really would like to do if you had all the resources and the wherewithal to do it? Those kind of big dreams. Saturn wants to help you in the time that it's in Sagittarius to create those big dreams. But what Saturn's going to say you have to do is to work hard and to be disciplined and to get efficient with your energy. That's a higher version of the energy of Capricorn. Um, the lower vibration can be just kind of addicted to work and work for the sake of itself. But the higher vibration of Capricorn, which Saturn rules, which is why it's involved here, is that it wants you to work smarter. And this is a theme that I've been talking about for a while and I'm going to keep talking about it because this is part of our evolution if we choose to accept it, where we work smarter instead of harder. We might also work a little harder, but we wind up working smarter. So if you figure out the dream, get clear about it, then make a timeline about what would have to happen in order for you to get there and then break it down into measurable steps. So if you want to be a filmmaker, right? You would have to first get a good camera, right? Maybe you need some training. Um, maybe you'd need to be able to take trips to the places where you want to do filming. Maybe you need to have a screenplay. Maybe you need to, you know, whatever it is. So get the big dream in your mind. Think about the things that you would need for creating that and then keep breaking those down 
into what you have to do every day to get to the big dream. And that's what Saturn wants to help you do. So here in July, right before it's about to go direct, be thinking about this so that you can start, you can have your plan ready. So these are the general energies of the month for everyone. And if you would like some assistance in using these energies and the ones that are more specific to your chart, which I can't see in the general horoscopes, then check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. You can see more about my personal coaching. You can also sign up for my free email newsletter and become part of my community and get the write-ups that I talk about with more detailed um, explanations of the aspects and what planets are involved, etc. And definitely check out, if you're interested in learning astrology and you resonate with how I teach, my astrology apprenticeship program will be enrolling in July and my Creating Successful Online Business program will be enrolling in July. And I have lots of self-development programs on my website as well and my blog. So go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and I hope you have a wonderful month. See you next month. Bye.